So this axonometric is of a football goal, and this is what's called diametric projection. In other words, we have 110 degrees and 110 degrees. We have two angles going the same way. We have seven meters face here across. And as you can see, I have um, a view on both sides. I'm going to keep it as close over to this side as possible, but I'm sort of in a dilemma in that I don't know how far out this is going to stick out. Okay, so it's, it's hard to set up. So we'll, we'll see um, as the video goes on where I thought was a good position to start it off. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to figure out, well, what's the story with this 110 degrees? So if you're given an angle that's not 120 degrees, which again, you tend to be given at a higher level, you have to do a little bit of math. So all you do is you take away 90 degrees from it and that will tell you the angle to set your adjustable at. So basically you can see I've set my adjustable here at 20 degrees, 110 minus 90 was 20 degrees. So I can draw the Y line handy enough and I'm just trying to locate where to put it. Hopefully this will work out. I'm not too worried if I go over outside the border a little bit, but I am trying to avoid coming over here. And I'm just looking at here, how close to the bottom can I go so as to avoid a little bit of that. And I'm just remembering about the part C of it as well. So there's a few little things to consider. Um, but let me see, is that 77? Okay. So we come up maybe about 40 millimeters. Uh, maybe about 60 millimeters actually, maybe I'll start from the center point. Start with 70. Okay, uh, I need a little bit of space there. Less here. So we'll go with that um, and we'll see when I draw it out if it'll, it'll work. So there's my line up first, there's my Y line. I'm now going to go this way for my X line. And because they're both the same, I can just twist around my set. So diametric means it's handy because I can keep my adjustable sets at the same angle. So if this is for projecting out both sides, so if this is seven meters, it means I need to go 35 to the left and 35 to the right. But once I go one way, I should figure it out. So there's my 35, I measured out 35, half of 70. I'll bring down that point, mark it here. And if I draw that across, that should equal seven centimeters, okay, or 70 millimeters. I now need to construct this part, so this is at 90 degrees, you can see the little perpendicular symbol, to the X or the Z line. Both will be the same. And I should be able to flick it back and do it this way. But if I join those points, it should also work out. So I have my triangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go do this. Actually, I can't. I, I may as well do this side first. I'm sort of stuck in a dilemma that I can't solve. Uh, this part because I don't know the height until I solve this part so I may as well I was going to start on the left hand side but it'll actually be handier to start on the right hand side okay so I'll bring this out and I'll bring this out here so they go out at the same angle as the x or in this case they are 20 degrees I'm looking whether this sticks out further than it it doesn't really and I want to have a space here that I go over this as little as possible so I'm going to keep that be a little bit stuck out, so I'll keep it about there. Okay, so hopefully that'll work. We'll set our compass to halfway and we'll bisect it. Okay, or oh, over halfway, sorry. To do a bisection, we need to set it over halfway. That looks about right. Okay, so that gives us the center point for us to draw our semicircle. We'll do it on a rect. Okay, so I'm just touching it off to check that I got it accurate, which I was a little bit off more so where I put my center point and my sharp point to my compass. That looks better. Okay, and as I said, this coming out to here isn't going to give me the point at which to draw this. It will work at already level questions, but if it seems this is a higher level question, and because it's diametric projection, you need to bring this out, and that's your point at which you can start the you can join to the opposite two sides of the semicircle to start your angle for your end view. Okay, so we have that. So we need to watch here. There's a, sometimes there's a few little pointers that are a little bit difficult to see as to how something lined up. So we know that this is four meters here, right? And this is probably, when you look at this, it's probably one of the more confusing ones in terms of figuring out where to start. So well, where's that distance, or where's this height here coming from? It's a little bit confusing. This is actually four meters. 
if this radius is four meters touching there, this must be four meters. So what we'll do is we mark that out first. Okay, and we'll set our adjustable set score to this angle. And it just makes my life a little bit quicker. Okay, so again, a lot of people, unless you're a bit eagle-eyed, won't spot where the next part is. Once we set our, once we um, drop this angle, let me just see if I had that. It must be a little bit crooked, but no, no, I'm pretty good. It just looks a little bit weird on that. Looks as if it's extending a bit to the wide. Try the thickness of the markers. You have to be a bit eagle eye. They have a little point there marked, and that's where that point hits the green. Is where you start your semicircle from. Okay, so that point there is important. Again, if you're ever unsure in an exam, just guess a point and continue on. There wouldn't be too much marks for that. But if you decided to stop at that stage, you'd be in trouble. Okay, so um, what I'll do is just reluctant to draw it in, in red because. Uh, I have a red bisection line there. So I'll draw it in orange just for the minute. Okay. So we'll set our compass to this distance or to four meters, which it should be. And we'll draw that up to that. Now again, we need to be careful and look. Okay, the top of this isn't actually perfectly curved. There's actually a small little straight bit on it. So if we measure back our one millimeter or one centimeter or 10 millimeters from here, I'll bring this up to meet it. That gives us our end view. So we're now going to heavy that in. So this bit here is flat. It's flat at the front. It's flat here. It's flat here up to, we don't know that height. That's basically wherever that hit level was at. And then I'm just going to go over this. I should have just heavied it a bit darker when I was drawing it with my compass if I was doing it normally. So there's my end view done. And the reason I needed that as well is because I now I know what's the height. So if I'm missing a view in one, it must be able to be just got from the other view. So I've quite a bit to stick out here. So I'm hoping, hoping I have enough space, but we'll see how it goes. So we will project these again. So again, just make sure that when you come back here that you reset it to 20. Okay, this angle that I was set at was for this angle. So I should be able to slide this down and check, am I at the angle of the Z line, which I am, okay? So we'll use our blue again. Now, I'm careful here not to go out too far because I need to fit this is gonna stick out somewhere here. As I said, I'm not too worried if it goes out over the edge of the page. So they don't look like they left too big a gap between here and the semicircle, right? So that's 50. So we'll come out about 70. I think that will be sufficient. So I'm just sort of estimating. It doesn't matter really. It's just a matter of trying to avoid one off the page. And also trying to not affect this. I'm actually looking at it. Maybe I'm not trying enough. But anyways. Okay, so I've set my uh, compass to over halfway. Reflect again. Okay, and then again we have to bring out our Z to meet this. And the point at which it hits the red semicircle, that's the point at which I join to the two far ends of the, the semicircle. And that's the angle at which my end view of the goal is going to be. So I'm hoping I need to have space for eight and a half meters. I literally just have. Now, how far this is going to walk, we're not 100% sure. So I will start too heavy in. So I'm going to hold my eight and a half. I'm going to go a little bit off the edge of the page. That literally is just slightly less than that line. Um, and I have to take my height. So whatever I figured out my height to be here. That. So we'll bring that up. So I'm 
why I just will set square. Well, actually, I only have two lines, so I'll just use slide and set square. I'm just gonna have two lines to go off. I was, if I did more, I, I probably thought I just will set square too. Okay, just the dots. Okay, so it's gone a little bit off the borderline, but it fits. It fits on the page, so I'm happy enough with that. So the only other bit really that I need probably to mark on it is this height here. Yes, I do. So I'm going to say, do I actually need it? I do because it's for the this little bit here to where it's flat. And I will might need to mark curve types in a second, but we won't worry about them for for the minute. We'll draw that line. So. And you could draw a little light line across between the two of them if it makes it easier for you to understand. It's up to yourself. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take the back for just a second and we're going to start to project down the various parts. So I'm just going to project down the four corners from here. So it should be projected down at the same angle as Z, which is our 20 degrees, which I'm happy with. And maybe I'll use, uh, can I find my yellow? There we go. So I'll use my yellow just to bring them down. And there's one. There's a second point. As I said, I'm going to need these points. Well, the only difficulty with the adjustable set square is it'd be hard to stop it sliding off the the edge or the T square sliding off when you're trying to get down far enough. So I'm happy enough with them, and I'll bring down my. Points here. So I'll start with the open part of the goal first. Okay, I'll worry about the back part then. So these two lines are my open part. And I need to keep going. This is what I'm saying in terms of how to, to get it to go far enough. So that's the front edge of the goal. That's this point here. This one here is this basin. That's that one there. This and this hit here. And then this and this hit here. And if I mark it, they should be vertical to each other. Okay. And there's a tiny bit. Oops, inaccurate. But it's fair enough. Fair enough, fair enough. So there's the front of my goal. So I think this marker sometimes can make a little bit of effect on the action. This bit here is the back. So that's that. And then this bit here is a 30 mil line, and I forgot to bring down a 30 mil line from here. And I could technically also bring it straight up. And that's where the two of them meet. And they said if I'm accurate, that should be straight up from that, which is pretty much it. Okay, so there's my goal for the main part. What I'm missing is this flat little edge on the top. Now I'd do this flat little ledge first. So if I bring down this here. Oh, what happened there? Oh, my, sorry, my set square, my t square wasn't in accurate. That gives me those two points, which are basically my flat little ledge. Now, if I wanted to, what I could do is I could sketch that between there and there if I was running out of time. Right, I suppose the other thing that's not obvious in this question is are we meant to throw in these as if it's, uh, you know, because it would be see-through, but we'll worry about that in a second. So what I want to do is I want to draw this curve here, okay? So I want to split this into two, e e two three equal parts. So if we look at this, this is roughly, this is actually exactly radius uh, 30 or distance 30 from here to here. We'll come in 10 and we'll come in 20. And we'll bring them, let's see, maybe if we use a different color, purple. Okay, so because that was 30, 10 and 20 and 30 split evenly. So I'll call this point O, which I have. I'll call this point 1, 2, and 3. And again, I have 3. So what I need is point 1 and point 2. In order to get point 1 and point 2, what I need to do is I need to know well, what heights are they in the other view. So here's, and actually they are on this side. So here's point 1. So I can mark the two of them at the same time. And here's point
Okay, so again, it's critical that I write the numbers on them as I go. So this is was zero, this was three, this was two, and this was one, and I can do the same here on this side. Okay, but I, I might probably use a slightly different method for, for this side. So what I want to do now is bring down these, so these maybe in orange, just to make them stand out a little bit different to the other ones. Oops. And I'll bring them down from here as well. So this time I'll make sure my Make sure they do. So there's for one and one crossed. There's for two and two. So unfortunately, this is a little bit close here. So I might give you a slightly different starting position. So that's for two and two crossed. That's for one and one crossed. Okay, so I have one and two there. So this is basically my shape that I have there like that. Okay, and if I want to show, because we're not sure whether this is see-through or not, it's one of those things when it's a little bit confusing because of the object that you're drawing and because it's not obvious from the question. It doesn't look like they want to show it, but just in case, right? Just in case they do want to show it. What you're as well off is take this distance and step it off for the other side. Now you could alternatively just bring these down. Okay, but I'm just going to step this distance off because it's a good method to get used to. So two was on that line, one was on that line. And then we have a zero point there. So I'll just draw this in and maybe a red. So there's my curve. So the last thing I need to do is put a sort of heavy line here where it tends to disappear. Now what you can do is you can just line this up like so. And you can draw that exactly like that. And that would be the back of it. Okay, I'm going to leave it in red. But in order for it to do it correctly, you would have to show that exact... Um, disappearing point so what you would actually have to do is make a square out of this and then draw a rectangle or make sort of a cuboid shape so and um, let me just see if i have a different color this dark green so i'll bring this up now it's a bit of a nuisance that this has ran onto the other part. okay and what i should have is it had this original point i'll bring that down that would be where the curve would have ended up if there's no gap so again take some marks make it a little bit difficult to see so that's easy there bring that across to that and then if i join this to this that's the exact point at which that red angle would appear okay so it's only a minor mark but um, it's just handy to put it in as not okay so that's part a and b done is drawing the axonometric so if i was to give you a position for it I actually would move this a little bit more this way. So unfortunately I didn't know beforehand. And obviously, so let's see, this is, I come in 140 for the center. I actually should have probably have come in. Well, actually we'll finish off this part and we'll, we'll see first whether, how much space I need for this view as well. I probably shouldn't have written my maths there. So it says the ball is positioned on the ground, or a ball is positioned on the ground point F for a kick. Point F is nine meters away from the goal line and is located in the direction shown. So basically what they're saying is uh, the ball is placed here and you're asked to show what the path of the ball is when it's kicked. So it's nine meters away from the goal line. Obviously the grass is going to be flat or level on the football pitch. So if I measure there, there's basically in the end view where I'm going to kick the ball. Okay. And it then tells me the path of the ball is kicked. It is a parabola, which we know from, from before that when we kick any object or throw any object is basically a parabola. To a max height of six meter have been traveled a horizontal distance of six meters. So what they said is if I have my ball here, so I'll just put a little dot, and I kick it, and they're not really taking much account for the thickness of the ball or the, the spherical diameter of the ball, at six meters away from where I kicked it, it has gone up six meters. Okay, so what they're saying basically is if I kick the ball and it goes up in a parabola up to here, will it go into or over the net? So if we come back six meters, this will be the end of the parabola. So this will be where it will land. So it'll come up here and come down here. So I suppose from looking at that, you can see that it will it will go under the crossbar. But what and it says ignore the radius of the ball. But we were asked to show the projections of it. Okay, so I'll take this light teal colour for something different. So obviously we know a parabola fits into a rectangle. So up six meters. And again, I could I could have used my adjustable set skirt, might be a little bit more accurate. 
and 6 divides by 5 we'll go 12 24 36 and 48 we'll do the same here 12 24 36 and 48 so they will go up to the vertex okay and what we have then is basically to split this six also so we have 12 24 36 and 48 so they made it easy by making both of them the same 12 24 36 and 48 and these will go straight up okay so apologies that there's quite a few lines on top of that but hopefully we can make just to it and again i'm just trying to get this done relatively quickly ideally i should actually be using my adjustable set square to make sure that these lines are perfectly vertical okay so where the first one the first one cross and we should know at this stage well how to produce a parabola so there is the path my ball takes so another thing they could ask is what height is it at when it crosses the goal line and if that was the case you'd take this height okay so i'm happy enough with that and it says by drawing uh, determine whether the ball goes in or under or over so we just write under just in case they're expecting to write that for the question and that's the question please this red line here should be should be heavy in as well so we'll just maybe that is okay so Again, it's questionable whether these should be heavy in, but I'm just leaving them as long as the examiner can see them, it should be fine. So I'm just going to mark out now what, what position we should have had to start now that I'm happy with this. So I probably would have came over, let's see, another 40 or 50 millimeters. So I, come in, I should have come in maybe 180. And my height up probably was a little bit higher, probably should have came up um, 60. Even 55 would have been fine. 50 would have even been fine, I'd say. But maybe take that in the next minute. Yeah, 50 would have been fine. Okay, and that would have kept me a bit further away from that. Okay, so hopefully that's the question. So come in 180, up 50 for the starting point in the centre. And that should do the question. 